Hello folks, my name is Matthew Peterson. I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works where we do everything from on-demand learning, private trainings, hackathons, virtual mentoring, uh, and you're now here at our YouTube channel. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe. We post lots of videos every single week uh, that cover everything from Power BI to Azure to Power Apps. Uh, and if you just want some free learning, subscribe, get those notifications and continue that learning process. So what I want to bring to you today is something that came up in a virtual mentoring session that is a common skill that I know in the Power Query Editor, but for someone who might be new to the process, wasn't as evident. Uh, and it comes into getting rid of columns within your data set, as well as being able to find those columns very quickly and efficiently. Uh, you might be bringing in a lot of raw data that maybe this table has over four, 300 columns, and you're trying to find that one column, whether you need to um, verify the data type, whether you want to remove it, um, and just do some exploration. And you don't want to have to scroll through back and forth to try to find that. Well, there's a kind of a little hidden technique in order of how to get to that column very quickly. Um, I also want to talk about the applied steps and some, some things that you might not know about that yet and to make your life easier if you ever have to come back to the data itself to do some cleaning steps to make life easier for you and for anyone else that you hand off the report to. So that's enough talking. Let's come over and see what I'm talking about with the report that I have. So what I have here is just uh, a very basic table to start off with. This is a DEM customer table, has a lot of customer information on it, and this is one of my dimension tables. And let's just say I wanted to get rid of a column. Well, the way that you do not want to execute this is the way that really is kind of telling you of how to try, I mean, it's really luring you to use this icon, which is that remove columns icon here at the top. And this is the reason why I would not go about it this way. So let's say I want to get rid of geography key. And so I would come up here, click on remove columns, and that column is removed, and it's now been put over here into my applied steps. I have removed columns. And then let's say I want to also get rid of middle name, and I hit remove columns. And let's say I do this a few times just by scrolling through my data, finding the columns that I want to get rid of. I click remove columns. I can highlight a few columns at the same time and hit remove columns. But let's say it's now time to come back into the report, and one of those columns I need to, to have back in the data model. My report user said, hey, you got rid of a column that I need for reporting purposes. Can we get that back in? Well, now it's a little bit more difficult, not super difficult, but a little bit more difficult to get it done. Because here's what the issue is. If I come on over and take my applied steps, all this says right here is that I have removed the columns. And there's not, there's not this gear icon, which I really like. And I'm going to tell you why I like the gear icon in a second, but it doesn't show up for this step. So in order to get this accomplished, I would have to either go into my advanced editor, or if I have my formula bar turned on, find the column that we wanted to re-add. So let's say it was email address. And so I would need to come on in here and get rid of email address because we want to add it back into the data model. So if I hit enter, email address now reappears. But you can see that if you've done this for a lot of columns, you gotta search and find for it. Um, not that beneficial, especially what if you remove like 50 columns at once? Nobody wants to go and look for that exact column name. So let's talk about the better scenario of how you should get this accomplished. So instead of using that remove columns feature, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get rid of this step here. Let's get it back to normal. I'm going to use the choose columns icon, which is right next to remove columns. This is definitely the one you want to be using. I'm just gonna tell you, it's gonna make your life so much easier. Because when I hit choose columns up here, what this does first off, makes it easier to get to see all of the columns that I have within this, this table. And then I can uncheck certain ones that I don't want. So I'll just get rid of these. I'll hit okay. And now look what's different. Over here in the applied steps, I now have a gear icon next to it. So if they come back to me and they say, hey Matt, you got rid of columns that I actually needed to be added back in, well now I don't have to go and find it in the advanced editor and just you know highlight it, <clears throat> delete it off of the formula. Instead, I can hit the gear icon right here. And by doing that, once I zoom out, notice it takes me back into the window of my column choices. So I can say, oh, they did want email address in here. The other benefit of this choose columns is now I can search for the columns. I don't have to use that scroll bar to go left and right to find the columns that I want to get rid of and multi-select them and hit remove columns. Instead, if there's a specific question, think if you got 500 columns and you know there's one of them that you definitely don't want. Well, now I can just use the search over here to find a specific one. 
So if I wanted to find my any of my education columns, I just type in education. I can say, you know what, we don't need them for this reporting purposes. And again, <clears throat> best practice is if there's a column in your data model you don't need for reporting, get rid of it. Uh, because that's going to help with the compression of your data model. It's going to help with the faster refresh. And you're not going to overwhelm your users who might be building reports off of this and going, man, are, there, are those columns that are there, should I be using them for anything? If you know they're not valid for reporting, get rid of them. So now that I've unchecked all those and I made the other check, I've added a column back in. When I hit OK here, notice we now have those columns back and the ones that I wanted to get rid of. So definitely take advantage of that Choose Columns feature. Now the next thing I want to let you know about in the applied steps that not everyone is always familiar with, um, and I actually learned one of a, a new trick a few months ago when I was on a VM because they showed their data model like, what's that little icon next to it? Just something I had not explored. Uh, and I learned, I learned from my customer on the VM, so I want to bring it to you here. So over in your applied steps, what you can do <clears throat> as you have lots and lots of steps, and typically, you know, a lot of tables can have maybe 20, 30 different transforms on it. And sometimes those transforms are very similar in nature. Maybe you've done three or four different merges onto this one table from your other tables. And every time you do a merge uh, transform, it's going to say merge, and then it's going to give it merge one or merge two, so on and so forth. Well, what if you want to be a little bit more explicit about this so that when you come back to this report two, three months from now, you're not going to go, well, what was I doing on that step? So here's how you can make some nice little breadcrumbs for you to follow along. So over on the applied steps, the first thing we can do, which I already knew, is I can do right click and I can just hit rename. And I could do something like removed other columns and then I could put my column names here. So column names. Um, or if it was a merge, I could say what table I was merging over into. So I can kind of keep that uh, a little bit more easy to keep track of. And so when I click off of it, you'll see that it has, in fact, done a rename. But here's another little trick I did not know about, like I said, until a few months ago. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a right click. But there's also down here a properties section. So when I hit properties, this is where you could also give it a new name. But now you can add in a great description of what was going on. And so now it's not just being reliant on a single name. Now you actually have a description that goes with it. And so if I hit OK here, here's that new icon that I had not seen before until that session. You get a little eye information. And if you hover over it, it's going to give you what I would call the tooltip of the property. But if you wanted to see the explicit, again, you would just right click it and you would come down and hit properties and this shows up. So I think this is a great thing to know about, especially if you're going to be handing reports off to other people. Maybe you're just the data steward. So you're just in charge of cleaning the data, loading it into the model, and then you have your report builders do the rest of the work. But maybe your report builders need to go back and modify something you've done. Now you've given them a nice timeline, a nice structure of what has been happening. So the last thing I want to bring to you in this little Power Query demonstration here is a feature that not many people are aware of, and I say not many people, I'm, when I say many people, those that are brand new to Power BI, uh, they're, they're not maybe that made aware of. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. So over here, I'm going to cancel this out. Let's say I go up to this table, and this table has 542 columns. And part of our process is getting rid of columns that we don't want. But maybe before we get rid of them, we want to validate those columns. Or maybe we just want to take a column and validate the data type. And we know exactly what column we want to use, what transform we need to be done. What I don't want to do is have to scroll through and find that column in question. That's just way too hard and very inefficient. So instead, nestled under this Choose Columns icon, if we hit the drop down, there is an option for a Go To column. I really like this. So if I click on go to column, it's almost like the choose columns, but we're not, we're not selecting or unselecting what columns we want to keep or disregard. Here what we can do is find a specific column in question. So let's say I had expanded a table out in here which was called async or asyn, and maybe I want to go to the asyn cooperation dot status code. So when I click on it and I hit OK, it takes me to that column very quickly and very efficiently. And I didn't have to search through and find out exactly where it was. And then if I go, you know what, that's the column I want to get rid of. Would I hit remove columns? 
You know I wouldn't. You would know I would probably go and use the choose columns feature. But just to let you know, because I'm sure someone was going to comment, they were probably going to say, Matt, that choose columns, you could have done it a different way in order to get that little gear next to it. So let me show it to you here. So let's say I'm going to, let's say these are the columns I want to keep. So I just want to keep these four random columns here. I could have done choose columns, filtered it down, found those columns, and just put the check marks next to them. But if you also want the gear icon experience here, instead of doing a remove columns, if I do from the drop down a remove other columns, or if I right click and also hit remove other columns, notice what happened. That step, so not just remove column, but the remove other columns step, that does bring up the gear icon and it's really just that choose columns feature. So if I click on the gear icon here, notice what we get. We get back to that choose columns feature. So there's two ways to, uh, to get there. Um, so these are just things I wanted to bring to you if you're new to Power BI and you're starting to clean up your data. Don't use that choose columns icon. It's going to make your life harder in the end. Use the, I'm sorry, don't use the remove column icon. Use the choose columns icon feature instead. That's going to make life simplistic and easy. So I hope this brought to you some cool tips that you can start using when cleaning up your data. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all things we're doing here at Pragmatic Works. I hope you enjoyed and I hopefully I'll see you in the next one.